All right then gang, so in this video we're going to talk a little bit about migrations. Now migrations are a subject which I think put off a lot of beginner developers or new developers to Laravel or anything else that uses migrations because if you don't understand them things can go terribly wrong. So I'm going to try my best to break it down pretty simply to begin with and then as we use them more hopefully you will begin to understand that they're actually pretty simple. So what are migrations? Well, basically, migrations allow us to programmatically, from our code, define the structure of a table in our database over here. And we do that using migration files. So, for example, if we're creating a pizza ordering website, which we are doing, we might have a table in our database which stores pizza records. Now, that database table could be called pizzas, and we could create a migration file to define the different columns we want in that table. So, the type of pizza, the toppings, the base type, etc. Then, when we run that migration, it will go ahead and create that database table with those columns inside it according to that migration file. Okay? So then, where in our project are all these migration files kept? Well, if you go into the database folder, then into migrations, you're going to see three migration files already here. Laravel creates these for us, and they're called create users table, create password resets table, and create failed jobs table. So we don't need to do anything to these migration files, but Laravel uses them when we run the migration command to create these three tables in our database. And it uses these for basically authentication and failed jobs. But we don't need to worry too much about them. Like I said, we don't need to do anything to them. They're already created for us. But if we just have a quick look at one, we can see that basically each one is going to be a class which represents our migration. And inside there's going to be two functions, an up function and also a down function. So what are these two functions? Well, the up function is responsible for actually creating the table and defining the structure of the table. So we can see right here, we say schema creates and we're creating something called users. So a users table, and then it fires a function which then defines the structure of that table. And you can see each one of these is basically a column. So big increments ID means that we're going to increment ID every time a new record is added automatically. So we have a column called ID and when we add a new one, it's going to say one, two, three, four, etc. And the second one is going to be a string and the column is for names. The third is an email. This must be unique. And the fourth is a timestamp. So email verified at, which is nullable. Then we have a password field, token field, and timestamps field. Now, the timestamps field are just things like when the record was created or updated. So it automatically adds those in for us whenever we create the record or update it. So the down method down here basically just rolls back whatever the up method does. So in this case, we created the users table. This one right here drops the users table if it exists. So this one creates it. This one deletes it, right? So when we run a migration, it's going to do all this, create the table with those columns. And then if we roll the migration back, it's going to run the down method and drop the table. So this migration file is used to go from an up state to a down state and vice versa, right? Okay, so that's an example of a migration file. Let's now create our own. I'm going to go to the other terminal over here. And the way we create a migration file is by using artisan again. We could create it manually if you wanted to, but I'm going to create it using artisan. So PHP artisan and then make, and it's going to be a migration that we want to make. Then the name of that migration, and it's going to be create pizzas underscore table. So I'm just following this naming convention right here. So press enter, and that's going to create this migration file for us. And if you look, it scaffolds all of this for us. We have the class, we also have the up function and the down function. Now the up function is creating a pizzas table and automatically adding to the table these two columns. One for ID, which is going to auto increment, and another for timestamp, so created at and updated at stuff. So we'll leave those in, but we also want to add in our own extra columns. So what things do we want inside this table? Well, we want a type of pizza, so Hawaiian or margarita, etc. We want the base and also the name of the person who's ordering. So those three things, and they are all strings. So let's add these in. We say table, 
and then we want to add a string and the first one is going to be type and semicolon then I'm just gonna copy that a couple of times the second one is going to be base and the third one is going to be name and that is all there is to it so we're defining a new table called pizzas and these are the columns we want in the table so down here it's automatically use this drop if exists pizzas so if we run the down function then it's going to drop the table okay so now we have that pizzas migration created how do we actually run these migrations well we can do this by coming down here and saying php artisan migrate and what that does is look at all of our migrations and it tries to migrate all of them so it's going to run the up function in each one of them so if i press enter hopefully this will work for you and if you check out this over here and refresh then hopefully you'll see all of these tables failed jobs migrations password resets pizzas and users so these were all defined by our migration files and if we go into pizzas which is the one we just created we can see all of these different columns the id created at updated at type base and name remember these two created at and updated at are given to us by these things right here the timestamps and the first one big increments id that's what this thing is over here these are the ones we added awesome so hopefully that all worked for you but there's a chance if you're using an old version of zamp or MariaDB, you might get an error down in the terminal and that might say something like syntax error or access violation something to do with a key being too long now if that is the case the best option is to download a more recent version of MariaDB and to do that I'd probably recommend just downloading a more recent version of ZAMP so you can just uninstall your current version and download the latest version and then hopefully that should all work and once you've actually done that once you've reinstalled ZAMP all you need to do is rerun this command but then on the end of it you need a colon oops colon and then you'd need to use the word fresh and what that does is try to run all of the migrations from the very beginning so it's going to cancel out of everything it tried to do a minute ago drop all of the tables again and then start from afresh to try and run everything again okay so hopefully that's all worked for you now and hopefully now you understand at least the very basics of a migration file to create a new table or several new tables in our database and in the next video what i'd like to do is talk a little bit more about migrations in detail and some of the different migration commands we can run using artisan